Good evening and welcome to the March 12, 2024 Parks and Recreation uh, Advisory Board meeting. My name is Don Hoyler. I'll be leading the, the meeting tonight. I am, I am the vice chair of this committee. Uh, Sri Kratek is the uh, chair and she was unable to attend. So I believe the agenda has been distributed to everyone. So hopefully everyone's had a chance to look that over. Um, does anyone have any additions or deletions that they would like to add? No? Okay. Also uh, distributed prior to the meeting were the minutes from the February 13th meeting, and hopefully everyone's had a chance to look at those. Um, so we'd like to know if anyone has any comments or if we can approve those as written. Any comments? Look good to me. Look yep. good to you. Okay. Yep. Um, so we'll consider those minutes approved. So we'll move into our discussion areas. Um, the first point uh, we want to talk about is the 2024 Parks and Recreation Master Plan Update Committee. So uh, do you want to do that? Or? Sure, yeah. Thank you. Andrew? Okay. So um, I just wanted to review with the committee kind of where we're at for the Master Plan Update Committee. And uh, we had our second community input session um, on Saturday, February 24th. It was from 12 to 2. It was right here in the auditorium. Um, really the same format that we had for the first community input session uh, where we had myself discuss kind of just the overall uh, Parks and Rec Master Plan <laughs> update process. Uh, we then had a presentation from uh, plan architects uh, looking at a rec center study. Um, and then our third presentation was from Further Trail Services um, who is doing a presentation uh, for a proposed uh, bike mountain bike project at Shadow Pines. Um, some of the information that was different was there was a little bit more in depth for the uh, Shadow Pines uh, mountain bike project, obviously gathering more data about uh, the surfaces, and I know we're gonna talk about it in a little bit. Um, that really was, was cool to see, uh, just in terms of the overall landscape and the potentials and uh, different parts of that property. Um, and then for the rec center study, they had some actual color renderings of, again, the potential of what one could look like. Nothing is going in front of the board or getting proposed. It's all for information gathering. Um, but I highly recommend, I, I know I've shared with this group, um, but if you need any of that documentation, if you want to watch e either of the community input sessions, they are available on the town's website. Um, one of the first links at the top of uh, the main page for the town of Penfield is Parks and Rec Master Plan. You can click on that and there's a whole bunch of information. Um, kind of looking forward for our Master Plan Update Committee, we actually have a meeting tomorrow night. Um, but we're looking at wrapping up our community input survey, uh, which is available online um, on Friday, March 22nd. So there's about 10 more days to fill that out. I'm extremely happy to announce that I think when I look today, we're at 930 uh, people that have taken that. Um, the nice thing uh, about SurveyMonkey is, you know, it kind of reads whatever device you're on and it only lets you do it once. Obviously, if you have multiple devices, you can do it multiple <laughs> times, but uh, I think having 650 uh, people for the 2019 one and then 930 uh, right now for this one is just a great example of gathering more uh, community input and hopefully that is affected uh, the master plan um, as we look at those kind of trends that come in for the survey and the upcoming meetings. Um, the meeting that I was hoping to kind of put out to this committee is I know we were talking about you know, the Parks and Rec Advisory Board looking at potential drafts uh, of that master plan um, coming up. Uh, the next meeting, which is, is tomorrow, but the one after that is going to be on March 27th. It's going to be at the Penfield Community Center, and I'll email this group. If you're interested in attending um, to kind of see, uh, we'll go over a lot of the survey information, um, start to talk about the different, you know, dimensions um, of the master plan to start kind of getting those narratives uh, written and uh, based on the, the data that we get. But I think that'll be a really, really beneficial one that uh, if you unfortunately couldn't make uh, the previous ones from this committee, um, we'd love to have you join that one where yeah, I think you'll get a lot of information from the community based on all those survey results that we'll go through. 
but overall for that update, uh, we're hoping to kind of digest and have meetings in March and April, and then potentially um, have a draft review go to town board May, June more likely. Um, and the nice thing about that is all that community input will get gathered and narratives will be written, but that rec center study will actually, the main pieces of that will get folded in. Uh, the big things we're kind of waiting for are details on costs. And I know that that's uh, kind of gonna be a big ticket for everyone. Um, so it'll be nice to attach to that. And because we're using a consultant with plan architectures, they're working with La Chase um, and actually really getting very specific details. So again, for a master plan, nothing's going directly to the board for approval. Uh, I think if, down the line or in the future, the town looks at potential community center, rec center. Um, we're already two or three steps ahead of gathering the input and having that information uh, right on hand for the board and, and community to look at. So uh, looking forward for the upcoming months, uh, putting that master plan together uh, to kind of guide us for the next five, 10 years. Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and really, if you haven't seen the presentations, I think these guys have, I don't know if you have, Julie. It's, mm -hmm. They're really good. They're really worth watching. Okay. It's pretty interesting. And the, the folks doing them have done a really nice job <laughs> preparing them. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. yeah. You can skip over my part and just go to the actual <laughs> yeah. presentation. The, the, the rec center and the biking presentations in particular. Yeah. Right. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, Penfield Trails Committee update. Um, maybe I should do that? Go for it. <laughs> this time. No, just as much as me. Yeah. So the February uh, guided hike, it was really intended to be part of the uh, winter festival, winter, winter night out. Um, so that was timed around a full moon in February in the evening at Harris Whalen Park. And the, the guided hike was to be three short hikes with glow sticks and things like that. But there was no snow. And so the, the winter fest there was really little reason to have that and as a standalone hike there really was little reason to do that so so that was canceled um, the march hike we just did last saturday that was at the veterans memorial park right here and so that went well we had a little bit of rain but then it stopped raining at least and by march standards it was pretty nice the park was in, is in nice shape tim's crew went and cleared some trees out for us uh, we had a chance to talk about the rec center <laughs> positioning since we walked right by there and got some good feedback. Uh, one of the groups was a, a family of four with two young children, so they were very interested in that. Cool. Um, so they had some good feedback and they promised to go look at the survey, which they hadn't done yet. So I think we had five community hikers, one of our more sparsely attended hikes, but um, it worked out well, so we had, we had good. And the next one is my personal favorite, I think, is the Thousand Acre April, uh, April 13th. And the reason I like that one so much is because of all the spring wildflowers and all the trees and all the things that are coming out. So there's a lot to see, and it can be a really nice hike. Uh, anything else you want to? Just <clears throat> let people know, for those of you who are familiar with the Wegmans Passport books on the Penfield one, there are supposed to be 16 different places around town you can do rubbings. Um, we as a committee have tried to find those. We've been able to find 11 out of 16. I, we believe the other five are missing. Um, so we're working on, and many of the ones we found are barely readable, so we're gonna work on trying to get all that back into shape. So um, hopefully reinvigorate that whole process. And then the other update from the Trails Committee is uh, thanks to uh, Joel from the Rec Department, we did do, mm -hmm. five of us went through first aid CPR training because we thought that'd be appropriate for, for leading hikes in case something went wrong. So we went through training last week and very well run training. <clears throat> yeah, kudos to Joel for doing that. So uh, uh, I got a quick question. Yeah. I'm not too sure. I think we mentioned it last time and I didn't ask about it. When you say the passport, and the rubbings, uh, are, are these like metal things that people add raised. to a book to, for a hike? There's a book and there's, there's a raised thing on the little um, you wanna, thing and you, yeah. you get like a crayon or a pencil and you. Oh, okay. Right there. Uh, See, I don't shop, so I don't yeah. go to work. <laughs> on each of the, the rubbings, and as Bob said, not all are there due to, unfortunately, vandalism and 
things going missing, okay. things like that. But um, if you find it, it's usually near near a trail kiosk. Uh, you would do a rubbing for it, and then if you get um, the majority of them done, you can bring it to the rec department. We have T-shirts that we give out for completion. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we're also updating. Some of the maps are a little outdated, and kiosks have been moved, so it's it's a good it's a good effort. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing that the trails committee is working on are kiosk information. And thanks, Tim. I we saw the new kiosk at Sherwood, or the updated kiosk at Sherwood, so that's nice. So we'll, we'll continue to pursue that. Uh, next on the agenda is Penfield Parks update. So the first thing is the Shadow Pines property pickleball project update. Is there any news on that? Did Tell you want to speak to that? Uh, you can see, you, okay. you got that one. So um, the town board at the, at the last session uh, did approve uh, one of the bids. Um, so I believe this June it is slated uh, for the construction to start to begin for 10 pickleball courts, um, a much needed um, restroom at Shadow Pines property, um, parking and two inclusive playgrounds. So um, I know with construction timetables, uh, saying a date and uh, when they should be open is probably uh, too early for me, but we're hoping uh, by the end of the fall uh, possibly into the winter and or 2025, we can open those up. Um, uh, looking at those um, while the construction will be taking place, we'll be looking at how we will be managing those. Um, currently for our tennis and pickleball courts, it's on a first come first serve basis. Mm -hmm. um, residents and non-residents are allowed to reserve if they'd like um, for their own games and things like that. Certainly the rec department will have programming and things like that as we have intro to pickleball, ladder leagues and things like that. And uh, luckily, we had a, a rec recent Eagle Scout project that I know presented um, the information uh, to this committee um, from Marco, uh, who did uh, display boards for that as well. So we're, we're excited to be using that for all of our courts to kind of show what's been reserved, how you can reserve it. Um, just we know uh, with how popular pickleball is, we want to make sure that you know everybody's able to use it. Uh, it's certainly not getting taken over by certain groups, um, and everybody is aware of the reservation process. So uh, we'll have more information coming out on that. Do most you plan likely to do programming there through the rec department. Yep. Yep. So again, we we currently have beginning pickleball ladder league. Right. Um, we have those at Harris Whalen right now, and. Um, they're going well with the four courts there, but obviously having the opportunity to have more than four, uh, kind of judging on what the, the need would be for those programs, um, having 10 uh, court options at Shadow Pines just makes sense for us to do programming down there as well. Nice. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Will the uh, construction impact the cross-country races in the fall there? Um, at, at this point, uh, most likely, we've already communicated with Cross Country, and they've known um, since last year that uh, we've shown them the map, um, and they they're pretty sure that they're able to get around it. Um, the nice thing again will be um, based on how the construction works. Again, I'm not speaking to construction timetables, but let's say the bathroom's open and there's parking available, it's only gonna kinda help out. Um, the whole project might not be done, but they may have access to some of the site uh, depending on what pieces go in first. Um, I'm not privy to all of that stuff in the timeline, but um, the hope would be is they'd be able to use some sort of bathrooms. Again, that's kind of, in my opinion, the biggest need mm -hmm. um, over there as someone who runs the portable restrooms that, that go there, so. Okay. And it doesn't disrupt any of the disc golf course. No, I don't no, think, no, right? no. We're not even not even close to that area. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, no pickleballs and discs <laughs> cross each other. That'd be a pretty bad shot for either group. So, well, uh, yeah, yeah be good. you haven't seen me play, so but, <laughs> but I don't throw it that far. Though, so. uh, but yeah, no. it's uh, exciting to have the, more recreation yes. opportunities <laughs> over in different places. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, thank you. That's a good update. And how about the uh, bike project? Is there? Anything? Yep, so I know I, I mentioned it before, but uh, you know Ben has been our, our main lead in, in working. I, I can't thank Ben enough for the site walks, the, the communication, working with Further Trails, uh, representing this committee. So uh, I'll turn it over to Ben again. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So I did walk with Adam at Further Trails again last week uh, with, with a couple other folks. And... Um, kind of got some bullet points from him where he's at, at in the process right now of the whole planning process. So as of right now, he's 
he's in the middle of some final stakeholder interviews and site walks, like one that I was on with, um, just to get some feedback, to, to bounce some ideas off um, the different trail users. And at the same time, he's also developing the plan on, on the computer. And you could see some of, some of the rough maps that he presented at the, the latest input meeting of a couple weeks ago. Um, so while he's doing that, he's also doing what's called field checking or, or ground truthing. Um, so once he puts something on a map, you go and check it in real life to make sure that it makes sense, that the, the concepts make sense. Um, and he's continuing to develop a, a draft report to present at some point. Uh, the next steps are really um, review some of the, the concepts, those draft concepts with, with stakeholders, uh, some select straight stakeholders, whether it's the town or, or Grok, um, the, the other, other major um, stakeholders. Um, and that's probably early April-ish, um, and then finalizing some maps, and then there will be a public presentation of the draft report, um, maybe mid to late May. Uh, it has to be developed with the town, you know, scheduled with the town, and then there will be some feedback, a feedback period, and then finalize the reports, and then a, a final field layout uh, once, um, once that's all set set down on paper. Um, so, like I said, I did go out on a walk with him last week, and, and there were some, some rough ideas presented, but I think one of the big takeaways that, that I took is um, when you look at an overhead map, you can see, you can block off spots for, for mountain biking or for shared use trails or, or, or even areas that we want to save for, for nature, for quiet, for um, you know, maybe just walking, um, but it, you really got to be at the property to kind of visualize what some of those things would look like because of the change in elevation. There's there's some areas where people are walking all the time already, and it could you could go 50 yards another way, and just because of the change in elevation, uh, the valleys and, and the hills, you don't even see what's over on the other side. So. I, I I recommended to him, and, and I, I think he took it took it well too. That you know that could be used to the advantage to to really keep keep it peaceful in some spots and keep it a, a bike park in another spot. And really, it's it's only 50 yards away, but um, because of the physical barriers, you're it's pretty well separated. Um, so. So the, the, it's not a huge parcel, but there is the opportunity to to have it feel like it's really spread out and, and different kind of sections and, and things like that. So um, I also got some feedback, uh, f f a couple letters here. Um, I got one from the physical education and athletic department at Penfield Central Schools. So I was hoping to read those, if that's okay with you guys. Sure. So this is from Mary Beth Walker. She's the Director of Physical Education, Health, and Athletics. She says, greetings. On behalf of Penfield Central School District Physical Education and Athletic Department, we would like to provide this letter of support for proposed upgrades and mountain bike trails in Shadow Pines. These trails would provide a safe place for the community to not only walk, cross-country ski, and run, but also bike. Currently, we provide education opportunities for our students to learn and practice the skills associated with all of these sports. And it, the addition of a mountain biking trail would encourage everyone to get more heart healthy exercise. In addition, it would help support the learning standards of community resources associated with our curriculum. The trail could encourage community interaction and could provide friendly competition. We have run, run successful interscholastic athletic contests at the park and would like to look to incorporate the mountain biking trails in either physical education class or extracurricular opportunities. The trail will provide a safer location to keep students off the road. We are grateful for this opportunity and strongly support this plan. And then the second letter was actually from the Deputy Supervisor of West Seneca. 
And uh, a couple folks from West Seneca were actually at the, the input meetings. Um, they had successfully put in a bike park in West Seneca. It's actually, it's right down the street from my brother's house. And it's, it's a pump track style park, uh, but there are always people in it, especially little kids. And the, the um, advantage to their, their park is it's pretty much all season. Um, I, I follow them on Facebook and they, they actually had the pump track shoveled off before they had the parking lot plowed. <laughs> and and <laughs> Bu Buffalo got a lot more snow than we did, so that's, that's saying something there. So again, this is from the deputy supervisor. It says, to whom it may concern the town of Penfield, we wholeheartedly endorse your intention to construct a bike park in your town. The town of West Seneca successfully built a paved bike track utilizing both recreation funds and grants, which has been well received and heavily used by residents and visitors alike since its opening. In advocacy for the development of low maintenance, freely accessible feature that caters to all skill levels and age groups, we requested plans for a pump track. Its popularity had, had a positive impact on our local economy as users from neighboring communities visit frequently. If you have any questions regarding this matter or project, please do not hesitate to reach out. We hope you consider implementing such an initiative as it aligns with community demands while providing numerous benefits. Sincerely, Amelia Greenan, Deputy Supervisor. So. Is, is that pump, pump track asphalt? Yep. Okay. Did Adam help design that one? Is that a further? I project? don't believe so. Okay. No. So that's what I got. Does anyone have any questions or any feedback for for me or, or anything to pass on to Adam or any questions or anything like that? No, those are good. If you could forward them to me, I'll include them with the minutes. I think Absolutely. those are worthwhile. Yeah, I think with, um, you know, just to touch on, on Ben's point, you know, if you do go and watch the community meetings, you can kind of see the the bike project as more data has come in and Adam's done more site walks uh, with various uh, local groups and, and residents. I mean, kind of start to see it evolve, um, but it is still at the point where you know we're not showing trails there. We're we're not at that design phase yet. Uh, that's out to the public in terms of you know where a trail may be placed. You know, I think a lot of the look from the last community input session was, you know, there was kind of bubbles, um, right. kind of like like Ben was saying, sections of the south mm -hmm. property. And I know um, you know looking at the Shadow Pines Moratorium Committee that uh, came up with <laughs> the various various different things that could be potentially potential uses at Shadow Pines at both the north and south of the property. Uh, when you look at that kind of design, uh, there were areas earmarked for different use. You know, mountain biking being kind of tucked into the uh, the south side um, in the corner. Uh, I think from from that it was a placeholder. It doesn't mean that that's the only place that these projects could take place. It's just trying to find uh, within that area where it could potentially be. Um, and I think from what we've talked about at trails committee meetings, the, the master plan committee, uh, committee and, and this one as well is, you know, we're really trying to look at connectivity of all of our trails, uh, whether it's sidewalks, our trail infrastructure, you know, all those sorts of things of how to connect different parks, how to connect the schools, how to connect around to Bay, down to Parenton and beyond. Uh, so I think when you look at that property, um, Really, I think Adam's taking a look at the whole south mm -hmm. side of that property. Certainly, there's going to be sections that may remain untouched, um, but when you see those com uh, community input session, that last meeting, those bubbles don't mean that there's going to be trails we are woven throughout. It just may mean a trail could be placed there, one or two. And from what I've heard with discussions in a, on a site walk, as well is you know if, if somebody is currently using uh, the south side of the property for walking, uh, as there are a lot of hills and things like that, you're probably walking on a golf cart path uh, designed for a golf course. Uh, so some areas might not be the best for drainage and things like that. Uh, I think Adam uh, is looking at and further trail services is the least minimal amount of impact of actually having potential bike trails on those trails specifically. So uh, I think when I had discussions with them, I looked at it as we're adding trail, a trail system to the, 
to the south side. We're not necessarily overlapping a lot of it. So right. if people still want to walk on the golf cart paths, you know, that's still available. Um, I don't think the bikes will be over, you know, the plan would be to overtake that. So uh, I know we've gotten some feedback, but I, I wanted to mention that to the group, you know, looking <clears> at that, uh, it doesn't mean uh, I don't think the bike park is taking over potentially. It's just uh, we're at that phase of yeah. uh, not really having the specific trails recommended yet. So I, I think he's he's looking at access too because he, that that spot that was earmarked and even some of the preliminary you know blotches on the map that he presented, you have to get there, mm -hmm. and you have to get there from a from a parking lot or from a sidewalk. So I'm not I'm not saying that that's really the main trail design, but it's the consideration that he is looking at, and it it would be more of a shared use. Everyone can get in walkers tricycles you know every it, not necessarily a single track mountain bike path getting into the into shadow pines it's more of a overall concept like family concept get people into the park a good access access to the park and um, accessible to to everyone um, so Has I, he commented on his survey did he does he feel like he got good input on those do you know yeah yeah um I, he's he's gotten a couple hundred. It was over 400 wow. real quick, and then I, I assume it's it's probably slowing down a little bit. Um, so yeah, I think he's gotten some good feedback. It, it it was a the way he described it to me. It was a mixture of of what individuals want, um, mm -hmm. and then of of what people want for the community. Um, you know. It, it did go out on a, to a lot of um, bicycle groups, right? So you got you have that feedback already. Um, but I, I think that that the survey is obviously a big part in the decision making. But it, you also have to step back and see what the community really needs and what what would be unique. Um, you know, if, if you're looking for super technical stuff, Tryon Park is a town away, right? It's right there. If, if you're looking for swoopy stuff, you know, you know, there, there's a lot to offer around. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of want to make it unique too, um, and, and cover cover all skill levels. That's really what's lacking is is really the beginner kind of right. kind of stuff. So and a pump track <laughs> <laughs> and a pump track, yeah. Yep. Um, I was curious, is this project gonna fold into the um the master plan or how's that gonna work because the timelines mm -hmm. are you just gonna try to fold in what what you have at the time of, of right. publication yeah so um i think with the bike project itself you know with the rec center study you know we've seen that in every master plan update for many many years so I, I think having a lot of those details makes sense to and kind of wait for that study mm -hmm. um, which should wrap up you know mid-april end of april um, i think for the for the bike bike project that's kind of its own thing at shadow pines there's already been the moratorium committee that has recommended <laughs> that sh that might mountain biking be there i think like you said whatever time we are when we're starting to have that last draft wherever we are in the bike project i would imagine a narrative just saying you know we would follow you know the board and the community based on those thoughts but we would like to capture where they're at at that point but probably like, won't be a lot of detail yeah that'd be like the example of the last master plan when we just purchased shadow pines and it was just a little narrative on like we just bought this property they're working on a master plan so it would be like Andy said encapsulate the time period of actually when it's going to come out makes sense Mm -hmm. And that, um, I just want to mention that bike survey um, is still available the same okay. date as our master plan survey. It'll end on the 22nd of March. Uh, so people can still go and take that. It's available on our website as well, but uh, that'll be open until the 22nd of March. <clears throat> Thank you. Good update. Okay, the next item is athletic fields and courts opening. So I'm guessing that's you, Tim. So we did open, uh, we did put up the um, nets on the hard surface courts um, last Monday, the 4th, and we have kind of officially opened them on the 5th. It's one of the earliest times that we've ever done this just because of the weather. And um, so we're trying to get ahead of the game on that because we have a super busy spring and putting up tennis nets and 
all that fun stuff is time consuming. But um, the hard courts are officially open. Um, athletic fields, not so much right now because they're still saturated. We're still shooting for you know, mid-April, the normal, our normal time period, or weather dependent. So if we get a really awesome end of March, uh, we can open up some soccer fields and lacrosse fields, yes, and baseball fields. But we're kind of keeping with our norm of uh, April 15th, end of April type deal. <laughs> okay. That's good. Fair enough. <laughs> Great. And we, have, um, we have our bathrooms that are open year-round, so the new ones that are here at uh, Veterans Memorial behind us, um, the other Veterans Memorial, uh, Rafa's po Park is a bathroom that just this past winter uh, was winterized and able to be open year-round. The ones that are seasonal, um, the upper Harris Whalen Lodge or bathrooms uh, right next to the open shelter and Channing Philbrick, um, those are hopefully going to be open in the upcoming weeks, um, mainly because we're preparing for the uh, Eclipse event for, at all of our parks. Um, our main event, which I'll discuss later, is, is at Harris Whalen, but we're trying to get ahead of knowing that probably more people will be at our parks uh, to have all of our bathroom and restroom facilities open. Um, areas like Shadow Pines, Greenwood Park, um, some other locations around town where we don't have bathroom facilities. Uh, we have portable restrooms uh, that are all handicap uh, accessible, and those should be in place by the, the week of the 25th of March, so the end of this month, again, in preparation for uh, the eclipse. I'm sorry, by March 25th? That week, yeah. I believe usually week they drop off, it off right. on Friday, so I'd say it's probably more at the end of that week. Uh, but again, at least they're here by April 8th. Sounds good. I don't know if there's any consideration um, for uh, keeping a um, portable toilet at Channel Pines mm -hmm. through the winter because there's a lot of guys that play yep. disc golf there. I, so. it, it was discussed with um, the, the disc golf group um, and what it had been in the past uh, was that when cross-country skiing and, and, and those groups, the school would order the extra restroom um, and have it there. The town decided to have it during our normal seasons, but it's been discussed and it wasn't, wasn't put in there. We're hoping again that those bathrooms uh, for the pickleball project could be put in sooner rather than later, so those can kind of be the, the main ones. Yep. Um, They're all not, season? Those are all season? Those should be, yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're kind of... That's my big push uh, is to have That's reasonable. Those, that makes sense. So it's not a cold, portable restroom in the winter. And, but yeah, it's been, it's been discussed. And that, while we're on that subject too, I did want to kind of touch base on, I know some of the disc golf stuff that we've talked about. Um, Tim and I have met with a couple Eagle Scout uh, potential projects. Um, and I think two or three of them are interested in building um, the, the benches for the tee boxes. So we're hoping to have around 10 or 12 potentially uh, by the end of the summer, as I know that that was something you brought up, Steve. Um, another thing uh, that we're looking for as well is a food truck. Um, we got our first application for a Did food you? truck, okay. and uh, I knew they you were, could be getting one. At they least. were they were discussing uh, what park, and said all of them are open, but you need to go to Shadow Pines because uh, that's the biggest need. So I've already communicated. Um, <clears throat> they're still working through their application. Is there a brand new food truck? They're Penfield based. Uh, but uh, not to let the, the cat out of the bag, but I believe it's a taco-based uh, truck. So hopefully disc golfers and the rest of the Shadow Pines walkers and things like that like tacos. So uh, we'll be putting more information out there as well as that comes up. And I know that I wanted to touch on some of those points Thank that you. I brought up about Shadow Pines disc golf. Thank you. Mm -hmm. do, do food trucks have to like <coughs> schedule where they're going to be at a particular place or they can just show up and... Yeah. So um, uh, two years ago, the town um, had an initiative to look at, you know, an application process for food trucks or food carts at, at our park properties. Um, LaSalle's Landing is one, um, Shadow Pines, um, back here at Veterans Memorial, Rafa's Park, just in case, because I, I believe they had some inquiries about it. Um, two years ago, we had one or two reach out interested. We didn't really get anybody last year. But then this year, we've already gotten three um, that are interested. Um, so I, I don't know if just the word got out that that's available, but uh, the processes, they fill out an application. Uh, we review and make sure that they have all the documentation, um, our 
fire marshal uh, inspects them like they normally would. Um, and then we've, uh, with Tim and the Parks Department, have designated spot locations within the parks that we consider those to be the best that we could kind of cone off for them. And uh, we, try, we try to treat it like a seasonal thing, like I shouldn't say we treat them like portable restrooms. Uh, but in, term, <laughs> in terms of the dates, we look at you know May until October as being those heavy use park uh, time so uh, I believe there's a fee of like seven hundred and fifty dollars that you pay but you would get the whole season um, and you could serve as long as it's you know laid out so again if, if there are anybody interested out there um, I do think it, it's a wonderful thing to, to have yeah. at these various parks um, you know different parks have different uses but um, I know Shadow Pines was one that we had heard you know mm -hmm. as, as needing food over there so we're excited uh, to hopefully work with this new taco vendor to have them uh, there in May. Great. Maybe earlier. Uh -huh. Well, we're on disc golf. I mean, you often have an update. Did you have anything? Uh, no, I don't really have time? anything okay. this time. I thought I'd be less talky. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I stole your thunder, Steve. No, no, oh, that's no, good. That's <clears throat> uh, the next item is the Channing Philbrick Park Trail Bridge Project. Uh, there are no new updates on that as okay. of right now. Okay. So having that work done this calendar year is probably unlikely right it's most likely right. they're going to be doing a lot of the studying the engineering yeah. the developing and then uh, timeline wise probably push into um yeah. just because of the dc and all those yeah, regulations the limited so. construction yes. season yes yeah. very limited <clears throat> very limited right yep. Um, just a couple updates from, is it okay, a couple yes, updates from was, the Parks Department. A <laughs> um, couple things we've been working on, Don mentioned, we've been trying to go around to our kiosks uh, with fixed um, plexiglass. We're trying to make doors for them so it's easier to get information in them. Uh, we started with the one at Sherwood. I thought it came out great. Um, so our, our employees have been working on that. And um, a couple of tests that our guys have gone through recently, I had a couple guys go through the pesticide exam they passed that, they passed that, and then we recently, I think it was last week, sent somebody for the CPSI um, certification that's Certified Playground Inspector. Um, we've tried to have that every year since 07. I know I took that course twice, and you have to pass like a really hard test, and um, we kind of switch it up between um, all our employees so they don't get worn out from um, all the test taking because it's only a three-year certification, but so every three years we send somebody else from our department to get tortured <clears throat> and pass that test. So we we have a certified playground inspector on staff at all times, nice. usually. The fields hold up through the winter. Pretty mild winter, right? Probably yeah, pretty, pretty mild winter. Pretty yeah. good this year. Yeah, we had some. Yeah, there was some vandalism. There was some vandalism on some of the fields. Um, Harris Whalen uh, by the sledding hill. There's some ruts on that one and um, Bachman field the lighted field That was uh, a big vandalism one and we're working on Repairing that when we can get out there and get our equipment and resod it and everything so Ouch. That's a tough one. Well, that's gonna be hard a lot of lacrosse activity out at that park, right? Yeah Yep. Yeah. yeah fun stuff. Um, okay. Thank you um, Andrew, a rec department update? Yep. Um, so really just, you know, winter, spring's going well. Uh, we have our brochure out there. I know, um, you know, I usually touch base on, on summer camp uh, to try and provide updates. Uh, we are doing our best to hire as much staff as possible um, to really open up our wait list numbers. Um, we're hoping to be able to open uh, more enrollment spots uh, within the next month, at least at our Scribner location. Um, based on current interviews that we've had. Um, so we're hopeful just to be able to get that. Uh, our dream would be that we get, you know, 10, 12-ish more staff hired uh, by May to be able to open up uh, another location, possibly at Harris Whalen Park. Uh, we're well aware of uh, the wait lists, uh, and we're, we're doing our best <coughs> to try and hire and, and, and make changes. Um, uh, but ultimately, you know, we're, we have the facilities that we have with the, the space that we have and the staff that we have, so uh, we're doing our best. Um, uh, some of the feedback that we've already seen in the master plan uh, survey, uh, you know, we, 
again, we know that there's a large need, uh, you know, in reference to the rec center, uh, you know, if it's, there's a potential new one, you know, obviously there's more space to have summer camp and uh, would raise enrollment, but uh, until if, if and when that ever happens, um, you know, really just looking at, at other options, how do we uh, maybe change registration? Uh, we open up so early, uh, which I think is a nice thing uh, for parents to be able to plan as we put it into our winter spring brochure. Um, some other municipalities, every season they have a brochure, which is nice. Uh, we kind of look at our winter spring as being able to, to save some tax dollars, um, combining those two uh, and putting uh, summer camp out there. But because we see summer camp sessions kind of fill up within hours and uh, days at, at some points for all of them we understand the need there there may be a, a shift in kind of how we do those things at the same time too we've also tried to really uh, you know coming out of covid we heard you know from families um, trying to get in summer camp and it being a financial burden for all of those weeks we've we've really kept our costs down i mean if you look at uh, just our camps compared to other municipalities. You know, there's there's somewhere uh, we're 50 to, to $40 uh, less than them per week. Um, so I will say that we're also looking at that. So there, there's probably going to be quite a bit of a jump uh, for next year just to try and get us closer to some other places. I'm hoping that doesn't affect registration just because we know it's a need. Uh, it'll still be, you know, most most likely um, a little bit less expensive than other places and certainly than private places. Um, but please, if it, I, I know it's, it's tough to be patient and uh, we're all trying to plan our summers, but uh, we are doing our best to feel free to reach out to us anytime, uh, especially reach out to us as soon as possible if you have um, high school, college, uh, retired teachers, anybody like that who's interested in a wonderful summer job working for the rec department at our summer camp. So. Okay. Um, so based on programming, I know that was a, a big summer camp thing, but you know, for upcoming events and concerts, we have our Eclipse event, which is taking place at Harris Whalen Park uh, on April 8th. Uh, we're planning that event from 12 to 4. We're going to have a couple food vendors um, at the top of the hill uh, with some other community organizations. You know, Girl Scouts, um, Penfield Robotics. We're going to have some yoga demonstrations uh, with yoga therapy, a Penfield business, um, and uh, a handful others with the Penfield Library, um, and really just going to have information out there uh, and things like that, uh, and arts and crafts for uh, really the eclipse based mm -hmm. sort of projects. Uh, so again, it's planning from that from 12 to 4. Uh, I know the town supervisor just recently came out with a video uh, <coughs> discussing that, but also some tips and tricks uh, with the upcoming Eclipse event. So I highly recommend uh, going to the town's website and watching that is some really useful information just on uh, the Eclipse in Rochester uh, in, <coughs> in a general term. So, so check that out. Um, other events that are coming up in the town, there's the electric vehicle on April 20th. That's at the community center. Uh, we're planning for our summer concert series, which is located at our amphitheater um, on Tuesday nights from June to August. Uh, we just recently uh, booked all of our bands, and uh, we typically have a town food cart that does hot dogs and sausages and things like that. A wonderful staple, as uh, unfortunately you'd probably see me uh, cooking more often than not. Um, but for years now, we've kind of looked at potentially having food trucks there and things like that. Uh, I think this year we are looking to sponsor with Effortlessly Healthy Food Truck, um, and they're going to be a main sponsor, and we'll be at all of our concerts. So uh, a little bit different food, certainly, again, me not cooking, uh, which might be a good or bad thing for people, um, but we're excited to have that kind of a sponsorship and, and have that down uh, for this summer in June. So that schedule should be on the website within the upcoming weeks, and then it'll be in our summer brochure. Um, and then we've got our Independence Day, our Memorial Day, and our normal kind of uh, events uh, coming up. But all of that information will get updated on our town website uh, in the upcoming weeks. So definitely go up and check uh, penfield.org and go to the community events section. When does the summer brochure get released? So we're, we're at our first draft right now of the summer brochure. 
Uh, I believe we'll have it finalized by mid-May, so it should be in residence mailboxes mid to late, or, or excuse me, mid to late April. Um, and then registration for that will begin online in mid-May. And that season, we look for our summer season to run from the beginning of June until uh, the beginning of September. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yep. Um, Can I just, sorry. Yeah, please. I don't mean to beat a dead horse with the summer camp yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, and I don't really think that it, it is worth it to talk about the sort of the capacity because obviously, you know, we should all understand that Rock is doing their best not to turn people away, and you know Certainly. you want you want to uh, staff the camps and have as many kids paying to come as you can. Um, but I just had a couple of, I guess, comments um, on the registration process and just things that I think that maybe we could just take away and think about. Um, sure. And I know um, that registration being in December can be helpful in some ways, but in, in a lot of ways, I feel like for people like me, I have four kids and, you know, they, they every year you sort of start the process of what are we going to do with our kids this summer? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the tough thing that we encounter is registration for rec is so early, but we know that it's going to fill up that we sign them up for all the weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't know what other camps are available at that time, sure. right? Um, but certainly, like you said, the, the pricing for rec, um, not even just compared to other local communities, but compared to a lot of the private camps around, it, it can't be matched. Mm -hmm. um, and so for someone like me with four kids, you know, I, I pay the same price for all four of them at rec as I would for maybe one of them at another camp. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the issue that that creates is that now I've taken up a full summer of enrollment in summer camp and ultimately they will end up going to most of the the weeks sure. um, but I know that like for my older one she's gonna do some sports camps I'm gonna withdraw her I'm gonna pay the ten dollar fee and it's gonna be no big deal um, you know the issue that you run into is people are waiting for these spots and and some of them will just wait it out and some of them will say I'm not taking a chance that you know I'm not gonna have any care for my kids come July or August Oh, sorry um, so I, I, I guess just sort of trying to think of a way to sort of firm up commitment a little bit better, right? So that when people are signing up, they really, you know, are going to use those. Maybe we can lessen the wait list somehow. Maybe there's a way to, to sort of <coughs> parse it out a little bit better so that people aren't just panic registering for the entire summer because, you know, the brochures for every other camp in the, in town isn't, coming out until March. Right. Um, so, so that's when usually all the other like sports camps come yeah, out, like March time Yeah, it's like range. March, April. And I think historically rec registration has even been later than December, but we've just, it's been pushed back a little bit. Yeah, we um, traditionally <laughs> um, pre-COVID for our winter spring brochure, we would start registration, you know, January 2nd, you know, yeah. when staff was back. Yeah. Uh, and we always looked at, you know, you kind of lose a week or two in January when people really are, you know, New Year, get out there for programs and things. So um, pushing it to, you know, mid-December has really helped enrollment specifically really for all of our other programs mm -hmm. too. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I totally agree with those comments. It's, you know, uh, something that we've looked at. Um, we, we've tried to bring a lot of our things to be more consistent, you know, our lodge pricing, our, our program pricing and things like that to make it easier, certainly for, for staff to have to communicate and plan for. Uh, but I think we're looking at, at, at summer camp as being a potential having its own registration date, kind of like you're, you're mm -hmm. saying. I, no guarantees, but it does seem like uh, maybe we can still put it in the brochure, but instead of December, maybe we do it in March where people have things more planned out. And then certainly, hopefully by March, as we're trying to hire staff, maybe we don't even have to worry about wait lists as much because when we're offering it in December, you actually have to think we're planning for it in September and October. Yeah. Um, and we have, you know, we have a general idea. You know, we're only a month out of summer camp at that point. Right. We have a general idea of who's coming back, but all of that switches. So, yeah, I think that's great feedback, you know, and, something that we've... And just, you know, the yeah. I guess one more thing is you know, with, with the finances and that, you know, you're paying for everything up front and is that prohibitive to people, mm -hmm. but also, you know, maybe it can reach a point where, 
you know, you're paying for it all up front, but you can still pay this fee and get all your money back, save, you know, 10 bucks per, for some people that's, you know, yeah. a drop in the bucket, but perhaps sort of having a point where like, I know you're not in debt service, so you don't want to say like, you're going to pay a deposit no. and then you pay the balance. Yep. But if you pay the full amount, but you can only so, drop <laughs> up to a certain point and so then we, we actually, we have payment plans. Yeah. And there okay, are good. quite a few families okay, that do utilize it. And um, it, I think with everything that we struggle with, it's getting that information out. It's yeah. in our brochure. Yeah. It's certainly something that um, we try not to put in bold, you know, on the summer camp page, but maybe it's something that we should. Right. Um, we do that on a case by case basis. Um, I, I'd, I'd say within the last three years, we've had about, you know, 12 to 15 of them total. Okay. Um, but I, I also think having that December time, you know, there's the holidays around that too, if people are paying for that. So that makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, that's been some of the kind of feedback we've gotten from payment plans of, you know, if this was in January, I would do it, but, you know, Christmas just happened and, right. or Christmas is coming up or other holidays. So um, I think having that March day or a different day would uh, maybe and alleviate, but still have those options to get out there. When do people have to, if you're going to, if you want to drop out, if you just, I paid for this month in, or this week in July and I decide I don't want it. Is there like a hard and fast deadline where uh, you say? It's a week in advance. A week, okay. Um, and uh, it's feedback that we've gotten. We've, uh, again, I think uh, our department is steered more towards consistency. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, if you have one program that's, you know, it's $50 to cancel, you know, it, it, it might be a great reason to do it, but also then that's different. And then, you know, there's those things. So I, I, those are options we've looked at, um, you know, all of our cancellation policies are seven days in advance. So again, that consistency, but we've talked about differences for summer camps, certainly the last couple of years. And Just as you know, you have we're well aware list, of people right? that do that. Uh, we also know that, you know, I think it'd be different if spots weren't filled. We understand parents are, are planning for things, but uh, we've also seen in the last three to four years that even with that week before, month before, we can still fill that spot. So ultimately for us, we're still... Right. providing the service right but yeah I, uh, I we're well aware that that people just register all and hopefully maybe that March time if, if that's what we go with we'll switch that, but, that that's great feedback and okay. um, you're not alone <laughs> we're, we, if it was a if there was a perfect way to do it we do it and uh, we look at it as a good problem to have and uh, we'll keep adjusting and but uh, if feedback, feedback like that will help us hopefully make a decision and I think people are, just, you know, I mean, and there's nothing you can really do, but everyone just knows the demand is so high that, you know, yeah. I, I was up at midnight. <laughs> like, I'm like, this is the hottest concert in town, <laughs> getting my tickets yeah. and <coughs> signing everybody up. But people, you know, I think yeah. some of it is there were people that didn't know, like one of my neighbors texted and was like, the camps are full. But it was already, you know, the middle yep. of January at that point. And I said, you re you way yeah. missed the boat. Um, so, you know, I think it's a combination we've, of things. We've even struggled to, you know, we send an email to previous participants to, to make them aware, hey, registration's coming up, things like that because there's been such a demand and we know it's Penfield residents that are utilizing it. Right. You know, if we push it out too much, then instead of maybe an hour that, you know, they, they don't fill up, maybe it's only minutes. So we kind of, we also look at that part of it too, is it's already out there. People are aware. Mm -hmm. We still want to share that information, but how much is too much? How much is too little? Um, it's certainly, you know, we're getting calls now. Of, oh, do you have summer camp openings? And it's like December we were closed and, you know, we, we want people to have that info, but at the same time, I think the thought of, uh, well, you guys don't communicate that. Our point is, well, we've got 300 people that have, you know, either registered or been on the wait list. So we're somebody, sorry, but somebody knew about it, right? People knew, but, <laughs> but yeah, I, I agree. And I think, uh, I think other options in the, in the future will be there because we know it's such a high demand, but how do you, um, sorry, last question. Because no, keep them someone had asked me about, well, you know, because we, we've opened up this camp session at Scribner now, because mm -hmm. originally it was PCC, now it's Scribner as well, and you just mentioned Harris Whalen. How do you sort of broach moving into other locations? Yep. And, like, are other elementary schools available? Like, is that an option? Mm -hmm. um, obviously, staffing is always a, a, a sort of a commensurate Staffing is the main piece. Yeah. So uh, we communicate with the school district as early as September, October. 
uh, which is nice because their school year is starting. Right. And we say, hey, you know, what are your what are your thoughts? Is is this available? Um, Scribner has been, you know, I can't speak highly enough about their staff, their principal, um, and and their custodial staff allowing us to use it uh, mainly because that's one of the bigger ones. Yeah. Um, it's got a great pr playground, uh, a large gymnasium. You know, we're able to use different classrooms, so that's kind of been our go-to. Right. Um, and then we've looked at Harris Whale. We we book Harris Whale and Lodge Monday through. Friday from Ju from late June until August hoping that we're gonna get staff okay. and we've done that for we had camp there uh, I think the last in 2021 but that was because we weren't allowed in schools based on you know COVID restrictions okay. um, so we still book that Monday through Friday um, again based on our own facility space we're hoping that we get summer camp staff to fill that and that is still an option now so again uh, apply and, and get your names in as soon as possible. Um, uh, but we do utilize that space if summer camp's not in there. We do programs like chair yoga, mm -hmm. um, some of our other you know robotics types camps. So it's definitely being used, just maybe not Monday through Friday throughout that time. And we've kind of looked at that as not being, uh, you know, maybe the Fridays would be hot sellers for people to use the lodges. Uh, but we don't use look at it as a disservice. It's just we don't have the facility space at our current community center to add enrollment. So right. we have to look for these different places. But okay. if we looked for an elementary school, um, that's a great option. But we don't want to book it without having the staff. And no, uh, we're trying to grow Harris Whalem. Right. And then if we see a large need there and we can get staff, you know, move move further. But okay. We're, we're working on it, I swear. I know. Yeah. I know you are. And we appreciate, you know, all the communication feedback and keep it coming and okay. we'll see where it goes. Good question, Thanks. Julie. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the next agenda item is the Clark Road Barn Committee update. Um, Shri is part of that committee and she sent a note saying that there were no updates since the last meeting. So I'm, I don't know what's going on there. <clears throat> I, I know there's been some information put out there. Uh, they're kind of in the process of uh, trying to figure out um, how to get a really good in-depth study of the, the, the building, really. Yeah. Um, but the barn, it's, uh, I think, has enough damage to it where it's really not able to get people in there because of right. uh, its current state. Uh, so it's, uh, I believe they're trying to figure out what the best uh, route or consultant yeah. to use for something like that. Okay, thank you. Um, other business, we have none. Held items, uh, that's where we would talk about action items, but last month we closed all of our open action items, so that's nothing there. No old business, no new news business, and no public. So the next meeting is Tuesday, April 9th, 6 o'clock, right here, and the meeting can now be adjourned at 6.58.